welcome friends to this uh, NPTEL MOOC module on health economics. Uh, we are right now in week number uh, 5 that is unit number 5 uh, discussing uh, the you know important aspects of health economics that is called health financing. We already discussed the background of uh, you know health financing and its need in the last lecture. Um, now it's, it's uh, you know quite uh, important for us to address uh, how the individual as patient or the household are actually uh, you know um, trapped under uh, certain forms of you know burden and that burden how it is dealt through you know health insurance so largely the burden is conceptualized in economic literature is through uncertainty and risk so, we will be uh, emphasizing uh, here on uncertainty and risk and how far uh, health insurance is addressing these two. So, uh, as a recap of our previous lecture, we discussed about healthcare financing, national health accounts in particular and identify the impoverishment effect of uh, healthcare payments and, uh, and an out of pocket expenditure. Health is, as we know, uncertain and coping measures to prevent impoverishment due to unexpected high health spending are indeed required. So, what are the uh, learning goals of this uh, lecture is on uncertainty of health risk, uh, risk pooling and uh, health insurance, then patient payments. Uh, so, we will be discussing patient payments through various type of uh, payments and their distributional effects and also we will talk about policy option of applying negative patient payments to increase the utilization of some types of you know uh, healthcare. So, uh, what are your expectations then? You know, after uh, going through a couple of lectures on uh, financing, yes, of course, you can apply uh, for various uh, consulting work. Maybe you can apply these. Um, you know latest arguments in your research or in your uh, project writing and besides that i think um, the you know hands on uh, numeric examples which you have given here would be highly useful for answering um, the questions especially for the exam final exam as well as for the uh, internal assessments so do we have tried our best to you know present the discussions very carefully and uh, we have our TAs which are uh, you know which who are dedicatedly you know developing the content and your you know queries will be at risk carefully. So, let us uh, go further and uh, in order to uh, understand the 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 you know uh, healthcare financing and the uncertainty uh, and, and risk in particular we need to take the help of uh, probability, expected utility, expected value, variance and standard deviation etc. So, uh, the first obvious question is what is uh, you know uncertainty? Uh, we do not know what lies in future and we also uh, quite uncertain about our future. Do you know if your house is uh, burn or will burn down? or you may uh, or the car which is you know uh, owned by you may be stolen or you may you know get get sick in that case uncertainty uh, uh, really attaches in every sapling of our life you know and, and that is used to be uh, occurring at a friction you know hardly um, you know projected However, there are some you know average tendency of the uncertainties that can be projected. Hence, the insurance company might take a average value of our predictions regarding you know uncertainty and may address the issue of uh, risk. So, uncertainty in healthcare in particular where consumers do not know if they will um, ever need healthcare, where the you know incidence of uh, health need is very random. And uh, even they do not know the full financial you know implications of illness and we will also talk about here what is this you know full financial you know loadings and whether the post payment 
loading is better than that of the prepayment, you know, reservation of, uh, you know, health needs through payment of premiums, which one is really beneficial, we will be addressing in detail. Now, uh, so hence, uh, you know, to avoid financial uncertainty, the consumers used to take, take out the health insurance. Can you insure against the risk? Uh, in, in all ever mentioned events and insurance against finance implication is really possible. We will discuss all sort of things. Hence, we need to compare the uncertainty and, and risk. Uh, uncertainty refers to as per the you know American famous American economist uh, Frank Knight. Uncertainty refers to situation in which uh, many outcomes are possible, but the likelihood of each is unknown, where the risk is really um, discussed in the context of you know, quantifiable uncertainty. Okay. Therefore, it says that uh, you know uh, as per the definition by Frank Knight, risk refers to a situation in which we can list all possible outcomes and also know the likelihood of each occurring. There are some examples we have mentioned here, a, a new infectious disease outbreak often involves high degree of uncertainty, whereas the risk assessment of a patient developing, you know, diabetes based on factors such as, you know, age, family, uh, history and lifestyle, etc. So, we can ac actually predict or calculate the possible um, outcome of diabetes through cofactors. So, we will address all, all sort of things. Let us start with uh, certain direction called risk pooling and, and insurance to address the issues of risk. Okay? Uh, so, what do you mean by insurance then? It is a uh, pooling of individual financial risk across all members of the pool. Large and unpredictable individuals in that case, if it is this case, then we will have you know, through risk pooling, we will have a small and predictable individual risk. So, risk pooling is indeed, you know, uh, required to reduce the problems of risk. Participation in risk pooling is either voluntary, that is through private insurance or compulsory through tax, you know, tax uh, funded or social insurance. So, if it compulsory or voluntary patents. And uh, insurance is basically a contract in which an individual of uh, entity uh, pays an insurance company in exchange for financial protection or reimbursement of losses resulting from a covered event. Here we are discussing these things, how uh, money pooling really helps. Uh, we start by an example where uh, Pragya name. Uh, Pragya and three of our friends had a cool, uh, you know, idea to make their own health insurance funds, and they pool their um, share of money to their uh, uh, class teacher uh, with condition to uh, that you know one who gets sick will get all the money. Pragya's three friends were staying at the school hostel, but she went home every day. One day. When it was raining heavily, Pragya got completely wet on her way back to her home and ended up getting sick with a fever. She got all the money due, uh, to, to pay her treatment due to pooling of funds. So, Pragya, in this uh, picture, in this uh, you know, interactive uh, one, we have explained how pooling really helps someone who is you know, attached to some forms of risk. So, you can just have a check once again. We try to pull it first. You know, there are four friends, including uh, Pragya. They have started pulling their money, and at the time of some catastrophe or some forms of uh, you know, uh, you know, disease, as we have mentioned here, Pragya faced with rain, and uh, due to that, Pragya uh, got sick, and we have changed the color. You can just mark uh, here. So, and all the amount is actually now shared by, shared with Pragya. So, the, this is how the you know, friends or the, the pooling of money really helps at the time of need. So, now we are explaining pooling across equal income and pooling across differential income. 
if there is a risk, there are uh, low, uh, low uh, it might be low risk or high risk. Uh, so, uh, pooling to uh, here we are mentioning pooling to redistribute health risk. So, uh, the contribution would be you know uh, like this with, with uh, you know uh, low risk individuals their their transfer will also be high, highly useful for the high risk one now you can compare uh, that you know some of their you know, points is also useful for the patients who are attached with high risk so this will be useful now here in this diagram we are explaining cross subsidization or cross subsidy across equal risk now you can just have a check cross subsidy for greater equity uh, now uh, income with uh, those who have high income now in the previous one we started with uh, risk we started with risk so risk are of two types and how uh, the 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 contribution is actually redistributes but now in this one we are discussing about income there are two categories low and high however with high income categories their income is actually redistributed through sharing with uh, the premium and that uh, is actually useful for the one who who um, who have low income so the net transfer from the high one is actually highly useful and this in this case that that actually helps in redistribution income and 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 uh, welfare so now we are explaining microeconomics of health insurance. We will cite the example of Pragya once again. Uh, Pragya and her uh, you know family has a total asset of uh, rupees thirty five thousand, and uh, you know they, they, there is one percent you know chance of Pragya getting uh, sick in any uh, rainy day. The treatment cost is actually rupees ten thousand as far as assumption. So three things I have mentioned. One is starting with the W. I have mentioned wealth, then uh, uh, risk. Risk, uh, you know, uh, is, is of one percent, and uh, the cost of treatment because of uh, getting sick is of ten thousand. So now, out of thirty-five thousand, with uh, ninety-nine per percent probability that. Program will be you know in, in good health, hence there will be no expenditure. So 35 is intact with 1% probability. If Pragya is sick, then uh, 10,000 will be deducted, and what is left is of 25,000 with our income or wealth. Now we are discussing about uh, you know another case. Her class teacher came up with this idea that if she uh, gives him rupees 100. Okay, as premium basis, then uh, as as premium basis, he will pay her treatment cost of ten thousand, okay, uh, rupees uh, when she gets sick. So if the hundred rupees as premium is paid by Pragya to her class teacher, then um, you know the class teacher will actually reimburse ten thousand rupees. Hence, with that ninety uh, nine percent probability as good health. Pragya will end up with, you know, since 100 rupees is paid as premium, so 34,900 is the income left with, with her. Okay. However, in the case of uh, sick uh, rupees, uh, sorry, one percent probability we have attached, and we know that 10,000 is actually paid for health treatment, and if premium is already taken. In that case, ten thousand is actually going to be, you know, reimbursed by her, her teacher. However, rupees hundred is actually paid. Hence, the total income is still remain the same as against the, you know, good health case. Hence, you know, in this case, uh, program will end off with uh, thirty-four thousand, thirty-four thousand nine hundred, uh, and program will now fully insured against loss. Now, I will discuss uh, a, a generalized context by taking you know the nth possibilities one by one. In general, if Pragya purchases insurance of rupees k with premium of uh, you know maybe in that case we have said 100 uh, as, as a certain percentage of the insured amount. So, hence we have said it is uh, gamma times certain proportion of the you know um, some assured amount and that is in fact called gamma. So, gamma times k is to be paid. Uh, the probability as we already uttered is 1 percent hence it is 0 0.01 percent of getting you know uh, 25,000 plus uh, k 
K is the you know uh, insurance of rupees um, uh, K minus gamma, gamma K and probability of good health. So, that means only only you know this much is deducted that is uh, in, in our case it is of uh, 100. Okay, so, 34,900 in both the case we have seen that once insurance is reserved from the beginning of the period, then um, the wealth uh, is considered to be reserved and an equivalent. If you purchase rupees K worth of insurance, you give off you know gamma K of consumption possibility in the good state in exchange of K minus gamma K of consumption possibility in the bad state. Uh, hence, individual preference matters while choosing insurance plans. And we know that there are uh, three possibilities uh, of, of risk and on the basis of that we can estimate in which context the actually consumer or the patient is ready to or, or the, the normal individual is ready to uh, bear the insurance. So, there are actually you know uh, perceptions are different one is uh, maybe risk neutral type, risk averse type and risk seeker or risk lover type consumers. In this case uh, some of the example you can cite um, that is uh, the person who used to smoke and who, who does not. So, in that case you can easily expect who will be more risk lover and who will be risk averse. Of course, the one who is not taking you know smoke or not uh, smoking regularly will be preferred to be risk averse. So, hence the utility functions for us is uh, presented like this. We have a probability function and uh, you know consumptions in, in different uh, health state. So, and C1, C2 in this case are mutually exclusive uh, you know states of the nature. If you are actually consuming one state and we have to compromise and, and compensate, the other hence it is mutually exclusive consumption. Let C1 and our utility function hence it will be you know probability and its consumption function. So, we know that there are two probabilities and, and, and two state of consumption uh, based on the risk uh, the person is bearing. So, C1 and C2 represent uh, consumption in health state in one and two condition let pi 1 pi 2 be the probabilities that is uh, state of for 1 and state 2 if any occurs. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so, there are uh, context we need to emphasize in case of perfect substitutes case. Uh, so, the utility function uh, is, is projected to be linear as we used to see in our uh, uh, no, consumption function. So, our utility function uh, the, the, the pr probability times its, its uh, consumption in, in state 1 and in probability time its consumption in state 2. Whereas, and this is indeed called uh, the expected value since we have attached their probabilities in both the conditions ok and uh, this tends to be our average level of consumption. Another condition of uh, the utility function is of Cobb Douglas type, Cobb Douglas utility function. So, it is in fact C1 to the power its probability respective probabilities into C2 to the power uh, pi 2. So, uh, C, uh, it is hence uh, you know this can be linearized for uh, you know the for the expected value. We can take the log, log linear function of it and, and find out the average uh, value. And the expected utility functions uh, we have presented so far is, is uh, uh, and uh, is on average functions using the Cobb Lugas utility function. But the most important referred uh, context for the expected uh, utility function is through von Neumann and Mergenstern you know, utility function. And in that case, uh, it is presented as uh, pi function of C, pi 1 and function of C, uh, and it linearized through its, its respective you know utilities hence utility can be written as a weighted sum. So, basically uh, the weighted sum is taken and uh, the expression represents the average utility and the expected utility of the pattern of consumption C1 and C2. Hence what we have presented just now is, is uh, in our case is actually Vc stand for C here and in our another case it is Vc stand for log C. So, uh, let us apply an you know, expected utility framework to uh, simple uh, choice problem. Suppose Deepak has a wealth of rupees 10 and he thinks of gamble 
uh, that uh, gives him a 50 percent probability of winning you know either rupees 5 or 50 percent uh, probability of losses of that is minus 5 or, or, or 5. So, the expected uh, value of the wealth can be calculated with the probability of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 you know uh, times uh, either it is minus 5, 10 minus 5 or 10 plus 5. Hence, the expected value of wealth is 10 and the utility of the expected value is basically utility of this expected value that is utility of 10 and uh, expected utility of wealth what is this? This is basically we are uh, multiplying with the uh, probability and its uh, expected utility uh, expected value. So, it is indeed um, this. Uh, 0.5 of this one, 3.5 of this, so 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 0.5 of uh, utility of 5. So this is precisely uh, the change in the value of wealth. But here we are saying, even if it is as it has been changed, it has been reduced. The utility might have been increased. So the expected value is considered to be different. Okay, and now this is how it, uh, the expected value of wealth is presented. All right. Now, we will be presenting in uh, a diagram to explain it very clearly. We start by citing the case of risk averse individual. Okay. A person who is risk averse uh, has the utility function uh, which is you know uh, concave uh, to, the, to the origin and uh, you know we will also uh, give you uh, the example of uh, its, its equation form at the end and used to be you know square root of the utility or the, or the, the value I will come to it. Now, at this moment now you can just have a see uh, look if utility function like this we have taken wealth and its utility and we know that utility level increases you know in, at an increasing rate initially then decreases at an, um, after certain level of wealth and uh, then will then there might be a maximum possible points okay so we we will discuss all, all sort of things now i will be emphasizing on this and uh, here we have presented its you know average value the expected uh, utility or expected wealth by taking the maximum possibility at 5 level at 5 and 15 um, 10 minus 5 that is 5 and 10 plus 5 at a 50 percent probability case. So, we will discuss this now. You can just have a check. Uh, this is what uh, is our 15 here and uh, 10, uh, 5 there and we have uh, projected it, it accordingly. Now, the uh, expected value, um, the utility of the expected value is, is at this point is highlighted and uh, the expected wealth is actually 10 so but the the expected utility is higher than that of the expected uh, value of wealth so uh, deepak has a uh, no concave utility function as i already mentioned the utility function uh, is in fact uh, is presented over here 0 0.5 times 15 plus 0 0.5 that is half of the prob probability is half times 5 so the utility is uh, of the 10 is now greater than this is how it is highlighted is greater than that of uh, the expected uh, utility of wealth expected utility uh, of wealth. So, now initially we said utility of expected value then this is expected utility of wealth this means that uh, 0 0.5 times utility of 15 15 uh, plus 0.5 of utility 5. So, the average value is actually lesser than that of the utility of the expected uh, value. Uh, so, in this case for risk averse consumer the utility of the expected value of wealth is greater than the expected utility of wealth. So, the, the, the consumer will prefer to have the expected value of the wealth rather than face the gamble. Okay? The consumer will actually prefer to have the expected value of his wealth they okay, prefer to have the expected value is wealth rather than to face the gamble. Therefore, we said there are you no know, risk averse individuals. Now, on the next diagram we are mentioning our risk neutral 
uh, where uh, the expected utility, uh, you know, the consumption function or the utility uh, as a function of wealth will be straight line. And the expected utility of wealth is equal to the utility of its expected value. So now uh, here this is the utility function. Now we are presenting the expected value of uh, you know uh, wealth. Now this is expected utility and utility we have presented initially. Both are now now the same. Hence these these two are actually equalized. And uh, since they are the risk neutral individuals, now we are presenting risk. Uh, seeker or lover individual. In that case, the utility function as a function of uh, you know wealth is actually convex to the origin, and uh, in that case, uh, the average value uh, of the wealth uh, utility value is actually higher, and you can just uh, check it is just the reverse than that of the risk averse individuals. So, rest we have presented here. This side we can see a greater than the left hand side is let, let, you know, lesser than that of the expected value. So, the for risk uh, seeking consumer, the utility of the expected value of wealth is actually lesser than the, than the expected utility of wealth. So, uh, so, consumer prefer a random distribution of wealth to its expected values. Welfare gain from insurance how to uh, present it. So, you can see um, this is how we are presenting in terms of equation. So, these are all details mentioned welfare gains for receivers individuals. Welfare gain from insurance can be illustrated by you know considering the relationship between an individual's wealth and their utility. So, if insurance is there money loss due to you know illness will be actually com compensated. And cost of this uh, is guaranteed or co cost of this guaranteed compensation is specified as the premium P. So, uh, we have actually mentioned all those things. So, this is the total wealth and the minimum you know, wealth left out of the uh, risk attacks. Hence, the expected value are, are different and this is what we are presenting in the context of risk averse individual. And, um, in this case, uh, we are actually uh, discussing another context in another uh, unit of our uh, module. Uh, we will be discussing part of this in unit number 7 as well. Unit number uh, 7 where economics of health system, we discuss about uh, the, the you know, actuarial uh, PR premium etc. Uh, so, so, here the, the, the P which we have used or we are using is actually gamma times K. This represents the insurance, you know, company's expected uh, payout. Uh, that is, size of loss multiplied by probability of loss occurring. At this premium, insurers can expect to pay out same amount uh, compensation as they receive in revenue from premiums. And this involves no profit and no cost of administering insurance. So as as P increases, this is premium increases. Uh, from p equal to gamma times k or to p equal to p p star ok. So, this is what is, is, is given so that the you know we, we can get the higher uh, utility of the expected value and uh, p equal to p star that means uh, this uh, reaches the maximum premium of the consumer uh, will be willing to pay. Some of this discussion will be taking it uh, in detail in unit number 7. Uh, the later two you know lectures of that unit net 7 will be useful. Hence, uh, the wealth after insurance premium will be W minus P uh, that is precisely equal to P is your our um, you know gamma times K. Uh, so, uh, utility without insurance will be you know gamma times utility of W minus K plus 1 minus you know gamma times utility of uh, W all right. So, this will be less than that of the utility with insurance. Okay, so, as premium increases from um, you know, gamma times k to p star, welfare again decreases to 0. So, you can just follow from our numeric example and uh, further clarify all sort of details. Okay, this is what uh, we have said if uh, the, this is actually tends to reaching at a equal level and uh, welfare again decreases to 0. 
So, uh, this is basically called utility with insurance which we have highlighted here all right and uh, the gap you can you can see uh, the, the, the gap uh, which we emphasize and we are actually emphasizing again in our next lecture on actuarial payment and this vertical distance we also uh, will discuss about how much the, 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 the actual you know uh, payment is required uh, to ensure the equivalent you know uh, insurance uh, package uh, you will I am sure you will clarify in our next unit in detail. So, <clears throat> so to clarify further uh, here are some questions and we will actually give you some directions. Uh, one question here we have kept it for you is draw following utility function as function of wealth of individuals and identify which one is risk averse and uh, or risk neutral and risk seeking. So, three functions are there. The first one is uh, utility is equal to uh, W square and other is W. Second one is for sure it is uh, the linear function and I am sure you can guess it from the equation. And uh, this is of course a risk neutral one. And, um, uh, first one uh, you can just have a look uh, we have also given answer uh, in our case. Suppose that Laura has a utility function this is square root of W uh, that means it is a con concave function uh, and, uh, and an initial wealth of uh, rupees 100 or, or 100 dollar is, is given here. How much of a uh, risk premium would she, you know, want to uh, part? Would she want to participate in a gamble that has a 50 percent probability of raising her wealth to 120, and a 50 percent probability of lowering her wealth to 80? Since you know we have said that uh, 50 percent probability. So, um, so in each of our case, you will find these answers in the neutral case or in the in the risk averse case you will get these answers. So, even for the details we have kept it here for your reference I am sure you can understand and this is the risk averse individuals. So, uh, the risk premium we have highlighted our utility uh, expected utility would be uh, this much this is what is, is given our expected utility to be you know um, 100 this expected uh, expected wealth of uh, 100 dollar is indeed uncertain we would like to know the amount that she would accept with certainty that that would give her same level of utility as the, as the uncertain 100 dollar uh, so uh, expected level of utility uh, with its risk premium we have mentioned as rp and this is nothing but R 9.949 squaring both the sides gives, gives us the risk premium is 1.011. In this case Laura is actually indifferent between a certain income of uh, that is you know 98.989 and an expected income of 100. She needs to pay risk premium of 1.011 to avoid the risk. Now I will be uh, discussing um, other details like uh, patient payments etc. I think we can keep it to our next class ok. I am sure you will get you know enough time uh, for your preparation and so that uh, rest of the detail as a uh, sequence to the understanding of other payments we will actually take it forward in our next class and I think it will be very useful. So, I will cover in the next class about patient payments and other details. So, it is time to close. So, thank you for participation.